Hello again, my gentle and, of course, very modern apes. Gutsick Gibbon here, with a new series that I'm calling Science in Motion, where we take a look at the discoveries occurring in everyday life and just appreciate the moment we live in, where new and cutting-edge discoveries are at our very fingertips thanks to the advent of modern technology. Today we're going to be looking at a fascinating new paper that some folks on the internet are concerned may trigger the next planet of the non-human apes, which given this is 2020, in all seriousness, the work done in this study has some very interesting implications on the evolution of the human brain. Let's get started. Today, we're looking at a paper published in July of this year, 2020, titled Human-Specific RGAP11b Increases Size and Folding of Primate Neocortex in the Fetal Marmoset. In more layman terms, this paper can be described as a human-specific gene causes a larger neocortex in the common marmoset, a non-human primate. Even more basic than that, human brain genes inserted into a fetal monkey during development resulted in that monkey developing a larger brain. This has some really interesting implications for human evolution, as we know that probably the most stark difference between humans and our closest living relatives, those of genus Pan, is our brains being around three times larger than theirs. Even more interesting is that the growth occurred in the neocortex of these marmosets, the part of the brain responsible, among other things, for language in humans. So humans speak and other animals don't, right? Well, as usual, the answer in science is a very robust sort of. <laughs> because what is speech and language if not simply a means of communication? And communication comes in many forms. From body language to chemical signals to vocalizations like our own. In primates, the capacity for language and the complexity of communication has been heavily investigated. It should come as no surprise that our cousins demonstrate our own linguistic capabilities in almost every way, but to varying degrees. Geladas, an old-world gramnivorous monkey native to Ethiopia, use very basic vocalizations. <laughs> But these seemingly primitive chatterings actually follow human language rules known as Menzerath's Law and Zip's Law that concern themselves with the efficiency of getting a message across. Campbell's monkeys, native to the Ivory Coast, utilize grammar in the form of suffixes to identify specific threats in the wild, distinguishing terrestrial predators like leopards from aerial predators like raptors. Their broad vocabulary additionally allows them to differentiate between witnessed dangers and unknowns. Macaques, too, appear to understand and demonstrate syntax, in one experiment spontaneously generalizing the learned grammar to novel sequences, including longer ones, and they could generate higher hierarchical sequences formed by embedding two levels of abstract rule. Hominoids, or apes, take this understanding to the next level. Everyone of course knows of Coco the Signing Gorilla, whose keepers claimed she was capable of producing novel words by combining learned ones. But there's also Kanzi the lexigram-wise bonobo, who really wowed modern language researchers with his comprehension of human speech and application of words for making requests or performing tasks. But less well known is the wild ape's capacity for language through gestures, as well as their potential for the theory of mind and understanding of time. 
Chimpanzees and human toddlers share a gestural repertoire that appears to be somewhat instinctual. That is to say, chimps use gestures in the wild to communicate with one another, and human toddlers use those same gestures to communicate with their parents. Chimpanzees and bonobos can also gauge what information conspecifics have access to. For instance, they will alarm call when they see a snake, but only if members of their group aren't around and thus aren't aware of the present danger. Orangutan mothers have demonstrated a capacity for time-specific events as well, seemingly able to understand and reference the abstract to some degree. Humans, of course, are capable of all of this, and much of it before we even reach adulthood, all thanks to our enormous neocortex. So why is it exactly that humans have such large brains? The study that we're looking at today takes a look at the gene known as RGAP11B. RGAP11B is a gene that's only found in humans, and it's the result of a partial duplication event on a gene that's known as this is going to come as a shocker, RGAP11A. Our special gene is responsible for brain stem cells producing more stem cells, and thus results in a larger brain. RGAP11A exists in other primates, such as chimpanzees, but the RGAP11B is human-specific, its emergence traceable to around 5 million years ago. So once again, it isn't something that humans have that's entirely unique but rather taking something that's already in existence and then dialing it up to 11. In this case, of course, it was taking a gene that was already in existence and simply duplicating it. In the experiment done this year, the neocortex hack was applied to one of the smoother-brained primates, the marmoset. Fetal marmosets were observed after being given the human RGAP11B gene, and as you saw earlier, their neocortex size exploded. They even began to develop the little wrinkles seen in the bigger-brained primates. Now, the marmosets were intentionally not brought to terms, so we don't know with any certainty how large the marmoset brains would have ended up being post-development, or how these souped-up brain marmosets would have performed when compared to regular marmosets on cognitive tests. But fortunately, we'll probably find out a bit more down the line. Our ancestors were bipedal and using basic tools long before we lapped the modern chimp in brain case size. Comparatively weak and stuck on the ground, we really only had one primary advantage, our ability to cooperate with one another. As in all cooperative and group living species, any improvement on communication and mutual understanding is bound to be selected for. It's why, as shown before, our modern group living primates show some of the most sophisticated communication systems of the non-human animals. So was one little gene responsible for the big-brained hominins that we are today? No. The story is always a bit more complicated than turning one gene on. But, thanks to these experiments, it seems that we're one step closer to unraveling this grand mystery of the specific genetic changes that made humans such great apes. Mm -hmm.